Hello everybody, hope you're doing well, hope you're keeping safe. So a uh, little hobby update today, what I wanted to share is what I've been working on for my personal holiday challenge, which is to basically complete my Seleucid army, get the majority of the troop types out of the way. Now that being said, this is a army project that I'm probably going to be working on for years, there are just so many different troop types. Uh, but you know, I mainly want to paint up what I've got in stock. So, uh, the first part of this challenge that I've completed are, first of all, a unit of Cretan archers. And these are all based uh, for the to the strongest rules, which I kind of want to talk about too at some point why I like this rule set. Um, but I think these guys came out pretty nicely. I do, you know, I do like these figures a lot. They're War Games Foundry. Uh, a lot of character to them. I especially like the guy uh, with the red armor. And, you know, these guys, and I like all of these figures a lot, though. Uh, tons of character. I am uh, short on static grass right now. I'm still waiting to get some more static grass in, so... Um... Yeah, though, you know, the bases will look better with the static grass because, uh, you know, it can blend the miniatures in, blend the rocks in a little bit more. But I am pretty pleased with how these turned out, and I'm excited, you know, to get the grass and actually finish them. So the second unit I painted this week was this uh, unit of Silver Shields Agraspedes. And these are kind of like my veteran uh, elite phalanx for the Seleucids. Uh, 32 man unit, eight by four. I like to have all my phalanxes four men deep. Um, and then I usually either go eight or six across. Now the eagle eyed among you will notice the standard. That is actually a, uh, the standard of Pyrrhus of Epirus. It's not a Seleucid flag. Uh, but I actually uh, ran out of the Seleucid transfers. I didn't realize it. And I wanted these guys to have a red banner, so I used that one. And, uh, you know, I don't think it's really a big deal. And these guys will work in uh, my Pyrrhic army as Macedonian veterans, too. Pyrrhus had his uh, regular Molossan troops, but then he also had uh, Macedonians who went over to his side, and they are kind of the elite troops of the Phalanx. Of his phalanx anyways so yeah these guys will work um you know for any elite phalanx unit really so i did want to have red you know red is a color that i use a lot in my seleucid army so i wanted to have that common army theme also uh in livy i believe he mentions uh elite macedonian regiments dressed in red cloaks and red tunics so I wanted all of them to have those red cloaks and red tunics. So the unit is called the Silver Shields because um, the Silver Shields originally during Alexander the Great's campaigns against the Persians, the um, he gifted a unit uh, with silver shields, basically his veteran troops with silver shields. as kind of a sign of respect, you could say. And, uh, you know, these were men who had served under his uh, father, Philip, as well as him. Um, and by the time of Alexander's death, uh, many of the men in the regiment were 60 years old. And um, their last kind of great battle was in the earlier successor wars, um, fighting between Eumenes, who was Alexander's secretary, and uh, Antigonus, the one-eyed, and they were in uh, Eumenes' army, and they didn't, you know, really like Eumenes that much. Uh, Eumenes is actually my favorite of the uh, successor generals, but the Silver Shields weren't entirely sold on him, and they actually basically kind of won him the battle, and they were undefeated in the battle, but Antigonus captured their baggage train, and basically, uh, and in the baggage was all their accumulated wealth from, um, you know, their many, many years of campaigning, all their wives and children and such. 
And so basically they sold out Eumenes to get their baggage back. And then, uh, you know, the sources kind of seem to hint that Antigonus didn't trust them, broke, you know, and basically sent them off to die in the east. And they never really returned home to Macedon. So this regiment could be used for an Alexandrian force. I'm kind of working on an Alexandrian force as well. Um, but the Seleucids under Seleucus basically resurrected the silver shields as kind of like their elite regiment. They weren't, you know, a direct continuation of the original silver shields, but I guess kind of a homage to them. But all the, uh, the best troops, the best men of the phalanx were in the silver shields. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this update. I will show you a little bit how I base these guys. So with my phalanxes, I like to do them on these uh, bases from the big red bat shop. And I actually glue two together. And uh, Simon Miller, the author of To the Strongest, recommended this method. He makes the bases as well. You don't have to use this style of basing for To the Strongest, but I like it because you can actually really make, you know, units that seem accurate to the formations of the past. So, you know, I really wanted to have these guys like locked shields, which it's really hard to actually do guys with locked shields if they're on single bases. Um, but if you kind of mass base them, then you can really have that dense phalanx look. And these miniatures, the front ranks are actually uh, Aventine miniatures, and the back ranks are, for the most part, War Games Foundry. Um, there are a couple Aventines, like that guy. Uh, in the third rank from the front is an Aventine. Most of the other back rank guys are War Games Foundry. And I do like this uh, leveled pike look um, because one of the problems with phalanx is modeling on them on the tabletop is you can't really have them with totally lowered pikes because um, then they kind of end up, you know, scratching or, you know, when you're trying to move units into contact, the pikes get in the way, which is kind of an interesting, like, historical, uh, you know, element because the pikes would have kind of done that in real life too, right? But if you want to have men with totally leveled pikes down, you'd have to, you know, I think you'd have to have an extra long base. So this whole area in front, you know, you'd have to have a base there to kind of protect uh, your friend's miniatures or your the enemy uh, miniatures from getting poked with the pikes. And, uh, you know, you could actually do that into the strongest, but... Um, you know, I prefer kind of like this half-level position because then you get that, you know, that wall of pikes advancing, but they just go over the heads of the enemy. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, that was, this is kind of part one of the holiday challenge. So what we have left to do is eight more cavalry and my kind of war elephant diorama. And I think if I can kind of keep up this piece of painting I should be well done before Christmas um, and if that is the case you know I think the next project is going to be uh, you know I've got some Thuriothori to do who are kind of uh, you know medium infantry I guess you could say and uh, I think once I get those done because um, I'm kind of on an ancient kick right now I'll get those done, and then it's going to be on to the Normans. So, yep, thanks for watching, and take care. See y'all later.